All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. So first, uh, I invite you to subscribe me if you haven't already. So from this video, uh, we are going to discuss how to use Chroma DB in persistent manner. So as you already know, Chroma DB is free and open source vector database we can use via lang chain along with various large language models. So normally Chroma DB is being used in a transient manner, which means it will construct the vector DB on the fly. So with this way, it need to do vectorization every time we execute the question answering model. And also when we close the application, this vector DB will be gone away. But in this video, we will discuss how to save the Chroma DB in our disk and loading back when we are using it instead of every time doing the vectorization step. Also, uh, this is important when we are building applications with the Chroma DB because uh, vector DB construction is normally a one time process so that we can create and save the database first with all the relevant documents. And then we can just connect this with the, with connect this DB to the application for the question answering by the end users. So let's move to the notebook. So this is the uh, folder structure of our notebook. So first I will go through the folder structure. So basically here we have two folders. Uh, one is to store the vector DB that we are creating. So this is the vector store uh, folder here. So this folder will hold the vector DB we are creating. Next, I have uh, this data folder. So this folder basically contains the documents, PDF files that we are using when we are constructing the uh, vector database. Next, we have our uh, Python collab notebook. So as the data here, I have a sample document, which is a Wikipedia article about uh, Australia. So basically we will be using this as uh, our document to construct the uh, vector database. All right, uh, next let's move to the uh, notebook. So as always, uh, first we need to install various libraries that we are using in this notebook. So here I am installing Langchain and PyPDF as we are reading the PDF files. And obviously we need to uh, install OpenAI and then the Chroma DB. And for the tokenization, I will install this TikToken uh, support library. And then uh, we can import uh, these various libraries to the notebook uh, like this. So here I'm in importing uh, PyPDF OS because we are handling with the disk. We need to set the open API key as an environment variable. And also we have to load the documents or, and the vector DB uh, from the uh, disk. So I need OS and open AI embeddings, Chroma instance from the Chroma DB uh, that is taken from the lang chain vector stores and then we need the vector dbqa for the question answering and then we need uh, open ai from the lang chain llms all right next we can set our open api key as an environmental variable so here you can uh, specify your open ai uh, key all right uh, next we have this read and textify python function so this is a little bit of trick that you can use uh, in document question answering. So basically the task of this function is to go through a given set of documents and extract the text from each of the page from those uh, documents. And in addition to that, annotate each of these pages, uh, these page text with corresponding document name and the page numbers. So normally with lang chain text splitters, we need to specify the chunk size and overlapping sizes as the parameters. But with this function, basically I am overwriting that functionality. 
So here I am keeping the chunk as the text from each of the page in the each of the documents. So this is more effective than the chunking, uh, the text splitting, uh, because uh, with the text splitter, it can be chunk in the middle of the document pages. But in this way, uh, we can get good quality and coherent set of chunks compared to the uh, text splitters. So try out this method and see uh, whether you are getting a good quality uh, results. So here uh, I am uh, actually loading the files from the disk. So first I am specifying the uh, directory where I have all my documents. So if you can remember from the folder structure, so I have saved all my PDF files in this data uh, folder. So here I am giving my full path to the uh, as the directory. And next uh, from OS uh, list DIR, I'm loading all the documents uh, I have there. So here I'm reading each of these files with uh, read binary format. And also I am uh, only interested about the PDF files. So this one you can change uh, if you want. So here I am only interested about the uh, PDF files. So I am only uh, separating the PDF files with this if statement. Uh, next, uh, I get the set of files from here. And next I am calling read and textify function that we discussed uh, earlier. And so basically with this, it will emit uh, two lists. The first one is a list of text. So each of these text contain uh, text from the pages of the document uh, that I have provided. And next I have a list of sources. So these sources will follow the pattern of the document name followed by the page number. So this is, uh, uh, I am uh, printing the documents. So as you can see here, we have a list. So each of these uh, items in this list are uh, the text extracted from the each of the pages in the document. Next, uh, I'm also printing the sources. So here uh, you can see, I have the uh, document name, underscore, and then the uh, page number. All right. Next, we can uh, set the persistent directory. So this is uh, similar to how we load the documents from our uh, Google Drive from our disk. Again, uh, we have to specify the uh, location or the directory where we are going to store our vector DB in the disk. So uh, from this, I am specifying the persist directory. And then uh, again, I am initializing the OpenAI embeddings, providing the OpenAI key that I have set as the environment variable. Next, uh, we can uh, set up the vector database. So here I am using dot from text because I have already uh, textify the documents, uh, PDF documents. And next we have given the uh, embeddings instance here. And as the metadata, uh, here I will give the sources uh, list that I have created. So here you have to give it as a dictionary like this so that each of these uh, source will be aligned with the document. And next, uh, additionally, we have to set up the, uh, give the persist directory parameter. So here uh, we have to give the uh, directory that we are, low, we are saving our vector database. So likewise, we can initialize the chroma DB. So in this case, uh, it will construct the database and then it will store the vector db in our local disk in the directory that we are specifying here. All right, uh, next we can give the model name. We can give GPT 3.5 or for anything that we uh, have access to. So here I'm giving the GPT 3.5 turbo model. And next uh, we have to call this vector db dot persist uh, API call. So that's how it will go and save in the disk. So here what I'm doing is I am setting this vector DB to none, which means I am basically deleting the vector DB I am constructed. So 
because uh, I have constructed the vector db here. And then uh, with this API call, I am loading the vector db. Uh, I'm saving the vector db to the disk. So I want to ensure uh, I am not using the vector db that I have created in this uh, instance. So, uh, so I want to load it from the disk instead. So what I'm doing is I will delete the current vector db ins instance that I have with this so that I can load it from the disk as a fresh uh, vector database. So here I am deleting the current vector db so that we can load it from the disk. So if you call this vector db dot get, it will show an error like this because uh, the vector db is currently deleted. So we create the vector db and then we saved it in our disk and then we delete it. So currently we don't have a vector db in our hand, but we have saved it in our disk. So this uh, is a good chance that we can load this vector db back to the script and use it for the question answering. All right, so here I am loading the uh, vector db back again from the disk so this is super easy uh, i have i have given the same name vector db and then i have to uh, call the chroma uh, instance and then here i have to give the persist directory again so this is the same persist directory we are saving our uh, vector instances and also we have to give the uh, embeddings that we have created so that's it we have just give the local directory path where you have saved the vector db and then the embedding function. So if you uh, load the vector db like this, and then if you call this vector db dot get API call, here you can see uh, the uh, vector database, which is loaded freshly from the disk. It contains the IDs and the documents, as well as the sources. All right, so next let's use this for the question answering. So here I have initialized the vector dbqa with sources chain. So as we have already loaded the sources, uh, I will be using this chain, uh, which will give the answer as well as the source. So for example, uh, we can initialize this uh, the same way the, because the vector db uh, we are providing is loaded from the disk. So the other than that, uh, everything remains the same. So as we have a good chunk uh, with a uh, coherent uh, text from a given page, I have set the k equal to one, which is more than enough for us to get the uh, answers. All right, so here first I am forwarding the question, how large is Australia? And I'm set the written out only outputs to true. So as you can see, uh, it gives the correct answers, which has extracted from the uh, this uh, PDF document. So likewise, we can forward various questions and get answers from this uh, vector DB that we have loaded from our DB. So that's how uh, we can save and load a Chroma DB uh, from the disk uh, itself. So rather than that, uh, no, when normally we are using Chroma DB, uh, we have to use it in transient manner where when we exit the application or the execution, uh, the Chroma DB will be uh, gone away. But with this way, we can save our vector DB to be used in uh, uh, in the future, and we can also avoid repetitive uh, vectorization uh, process. So that's it from this video, and thank you for uh, watching.